Now, there's lots we could talk about these things. I just want to quickly throw up a few things here that, yes, you know, we can talk about it in terms of frequency. Now, I meant to check with Paige to see whether you were hearing this. But in any case, you know, as we go higher in frequency, the wave, um, um, the, the peaks and troughs of the wave close in closer together. And there is a time that it takes to go from, you know, the, the peak to the peak, the peak to the peak or the trough to the trough. Uh, trough. Um, and there's a time. So we can use the period or the inverse of the period is the frequency in hertz. But that's just a part of the theory. But the other interesting thing when we talk about sound is we are interested in the wavelength as well. So as we go to a higher frequency, think of that wave as this physical pulsation traveling through the air and it has a wavelength in distance, in meters, as you can see there. It's a wavelength. So it's a physical thing traveling through the air or whatever the medium is and it has a wavelength. So there's a difference between, you know, when we talk about pure frequency versus uh, the, the wavelength. Um, pitch is a sound that you often hear related to um, sound, and it just means, you know, higher pitch is higher frequency. Um, and, you know, to visualize what's happening, we can click the string of a guitar and we can see that vibrating and that string vibration depending on how you pluck it is doing it in three dimensions it's not just necessarily moving up and down it's moving towards us and away from us and that's what's causing the compression and rarefaction in the air that pulsation we saw before and that's why we can hear it